In the cold, dark emptiness between Earth and its moon, there is no roadmap. There are no mile markers, no signs to tell you you're halfway there. There's only the vast, featureless void of space and your tiny capsule, a metal shell, no larger than a small car, hurtling through it at tens of thousands of miles per hour. How do you know where you are? How do you plot a course so precise it can land you on a specific point on the surface of another world? Today, the answer is GPS, a seamless, invisible web of satellites that instantly tells us our position down to a few meters or feet. But a half century ago, when the engineers and astronauts of Apollo set out, no such web existed. They had to rely on a different kind of guide. They had to look at a system far older and far more reliable than anything we've ever built. They had to use their eyes. These were not human eyes alone. They were the eyes of the Apollo Guidance Computer, a complex, ingenious pair of optical instruments, the sextant and the scanning telescope. They were a mechanical and optical marvel of the analog age, a fusion of ancient navigation principles with cutting-edge technology. They were the thin, shining thread that connected human intuition to machine precision. And they were the single most critical tool for finding their way home. The problem was one of precision over a colossal distance. The journey from Earth to the Moon covered roughly 380,000 kilometers, or 240,000 miles. When the mighty Saturn V launched, its inertial measurement unit, the IMU, was aligned with stunning accuracy. But like any mechanical system, it was imperfect. Tiny, almost imperceptible drifts in the IMU's gyroscopes would compound over a three-day journey. By the time the crew reached lunar orbit, those small errors could mean being off course by hundreds of kilometers or miles. For a mission demanding pinpoint accuracy, this was an unacceptable risk. The solution lay in recalibrating the IMU's known position using an external, immutable reference point, the stars. This wasn't a new idea. For centuries, mariners had used sextants to find their position on Earth's oceans. They would measure the angle of a celestial body, the sun or a known star, above the horizon to calculate their latitude. The Apollo sextant took that ancient principle and hurled it into a new dimension, adapting it for three-dimensional space and a speed that no ship could ever dream of. The Apollo sextant was a beautiful piece of engineering, a metallic orb mounted on a three-axis gimbal system. It was the heart of the optical subsystem. Its primary job was to measure the precise angle between two celestial bodies with astounding accuracy. It was a tool of almost surgical precision. The sextant had two independent optical paths. The first, the star line, looked directly at a chosen star, a fixed point in the universe. The second, the body line, was a movable viewing path that could be aimed at a target, the moon, the earth, or another planet. Through a small eyepiece, the astronaut would see the two views superimposed. In the center, a bright celestial body, a star from Apollo's catalog of 37 navigation stars. On the periphery, the limb of the moon, for example. The astronaut's job was to manipulate a pair of thumb wheels to move the image of the moon's limb until it was tangent to the crosshairs centered on the star. This wasn't a guess. It required a steady hand and a calm mind. The instrument's precision was 15 arc seconds, roughly the width of a human hair seen from a distance of 60 meters or 200 feet. A mistake of just one arc minute could put them hundreds of meters or yards off course.
When the alignment was perfect, the astronaut would hit a single button on the disky keyboard. The mark button. This was the direct human input. That single press told the Apollo guidance computer, the angle between this star and the moon is now exactly x degrees, y minutes, z seconds. The computer took that raw data and began its work. But it didn't just take one mark. It would take a series of marks over a period of time, each one slightly different due to human reaction time, imperceptible movements, or instrument noise. Here, the genius of the Apollo guidance computer truly shined. It didn't just average the marks. It used a sophisticated mathematical algorithm known as the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter was a statistical marvel. It took the messy, imperfect stream of data from the astronauts' marks and combined it with the known but slowly drifting data from the IMU. It essentially filtered out the noise and calculated the most probable and accurate position of the spacecraft. It was a brilliant combination of human perception and mathematical genius, a perfect symbiosis of man and machine. But the sextant, with its pinpoint field of view, was only half the story. Alongside it was the scanning telescope. While the sextant was a sniper rifle, the telescope was a pair of binoculars. It had a wide field of view, about 60 degrees. Its primary purpose was to help the astronauts locate the stars they needed for the sextant sightings. An astronaut would first use the telescope to find a known star constellation, identify the specific star, and then turn a knob to transfer that star's coordinates to the narrow field of view of the sextant. It was a two-step process of search and acquire. The scanning telescope also had another critical role, landmark sighting. During lunar orbit, the astronauts would use the telescope to track specific predetermined lunar craters or mountains. By sighting on these landmarks and feeding that data into the computer, they could precisely update their orbital trajectory, ensuring a perfect orbit that would set them up for the descent. The most brilliant piece of design, however, was not in the instruments themselves, but in how they were connected. Both the sextant and the scanning telescope were coaxial. They shared a single common optical system looking out of the same porthole. On the surface, this might seem like a small detail, but it was absolutely fundamental to the system's accuracy. If the two instruments had been separated, even by just a few inches, they would have a slightly different perspective of the same object. This difference, known as parallax error, would have grown exponentially over the vast distances of space. Think of it like this. Hold a finger out in front of your face. Now close one eye and then the other. Your finger appears to shift against the background. That's parallax. The engineers of Apollo knew this and they designed the system to eliminate that error from the start. Both instruments were locked to the same optical axis. This was a testament to the foresight of the designers, a detail that saved the missions from an invisible but potentially catastrophic problem. The training for these instruments was grueling. The astronauts spent thousands of hours in simulators, hunched over a mock-up of the optical subsystem, practicing mark after mark. They became masters of the disk key, learning the arcane programs and their functions by heart. They learned to trust the computer. But more importantly, they learned to trust their own instincts. Gene Cernan, on Apollo 17, described the navigation process as the most magnificent and the most accurate feat I think we performed. He wasn't just talking about the landing. He was talking about the constant, diligent work of knowing where you are, of making a mark, and of living with the numbers. 
on Apollo 13 when their inertial measurement unit was dead and with it their primary navigation system. Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Schweigert were forced to use the sextant to navigate by hand. With the debris field from the explosion complicating their views, they had to sight on the crescent Earth and the Sun, making manual calculations. Their survival hinged on their ability to perform a task they had trained for endlessly but never expected to have to perform in a life-or-death situation. It was the ultimate test of man and his tools. The sextant and the scanning telescope were not just pieces of hardware. They were the physical embodiment of a profound human desire, the desire to know where you are. They were the link between ancient human knowledge and the dawning of the space age. In an era before GPS, before satellites blanketed the globe, the men of Apollo didn't look down for a signal. They looked up to the oldest and truest of beacons. They used their instruments, their eyes, and their minds to navigate the cosmos. And in doing so, they showed us that the most reliable compass is still the one held by a steady human hand.